Hi guys, uh, thank you for joining today. Uh, as we are discussing about uh, what a DeFi is and uh, what is the future of DeFi. First, let me introduce myself. And I'm Vijay. Uh, I'm currently working as software developer at uh, Dojima, and uh, I've been in the crypto side for for the past three years. So let's start with the introductions of both both of you guys. Let's start with Sergey. Hello, everyone. I'm Sergey. I'm from Russia. I've been working as a software developer for more than 20 years. 10 years I spent, last 10 years I spent as a mobile developer. Uh, three years I worked in Binance. I make the iOS application. You maybe already see this application. And uh, last, only last one year I worked like a CTO in crypto. Now my, I am representing Fintopia. It's a CD5 wallet. Means it's co- combine DeFi, CeFi all together in a wallet. And I'm a previous uh, developer. That's why I understand the issues we as a developers, uh, as users. And now I am represent a company. Means I understand how it works on the business side. So uh, I'm glad that you invited me so we can discuss topics in at least three dimensions. Great, great to know about you. I think uh, you're an all-rounder in this category and we can have a lot to know what are the questions that we can have and uh, let's know a little about Arnav. Yeah, hi everyone. Thank you for having me over everyone. So by degree, I'm a software engineer, but by profession, I'm a marketer, right? I've been into Web3 for the past four years, but I've been into content marketing for the past five years. And uh, this is basically what I do. I am the founder of Crypto with Studios, which is an organic Web3 uh, content marketing agency. We help any and all crypto companies make money through content organically. No ads involved, no nothing involved. And uh, yeah, so far it's been going great. Uh, Just to give you a little bit of background about me, I have worked with BNB Chain. I have worked a lot with Cointelegraph. I have primarily worked as a marketing specialist in some of the top protocols of the SWE ecosystem. And uh, SWE is one of the things that I'm most bullish about this upcoming bull run as well. So yeah, that's basically about it. I love social media and I love crypto and I want to do it till the day I die. So that's me, guys. Great, great, great to know about you are now. The main topic is DeFi. As DeFi is the future of finance here, so we we are here to explore the latest trends, innovations, and expert insights. Today, we're tackling a DeFi with two expertise in this field, Sergey and Arnav. So this question is to you, Sergey. So what key advantages does DeFi offer over traditional banking systems? Okay, it's quite hard to use English for me to describe because I always speak Russian about the advantages. <laughs> but let, let me try. First of all, DeFi provides really freedom of sending money. I mean, uh, let, let me a little bit focus in Russian aspects and regulations that from time to time we have some limitations for example, you can be your your banking account can be blocked without real need to be blocked. I mean, if you don't pay a really small amount, don't pay, maybe missed paying some taxes, your bank account can be blocked. But by the way, you have a big money on, uh, account, but you don't pay just near the dollar. You can be blocked and you can't pay for rent for electricity you pay you can't pay some debts and you have to resolve it on crypto you you are you you have key keys and means if you if the blockchain works well you can pay easily you you can be blocked of course if you're using usdt you can be blocked according to fuck for different other cases but but for 99.99 percent of usage it's totally free of sending money next it's first of all the true freedom of payments, and the second, let it be clear evidence, or and something that is really poor 
and clear to track not only source of funds but easily track for example how much I, I want to speak. I want to show an example. What I'm going to say, for example, for lending borrowing protocols, if you you can easily track how many people deposit to one protocol and how many they borrow them, and that's why you can easily track what is the deposit APR and what is it lending and borrowing APR means it's fair because but on banking system it's not often fair. It depends on regulations. It depends on uh, inflation. It depends on politics mostly. But in DeFi, it's like it's really fair. And the second option I want to say is clear, fair, predictable by people means I, I check the real lending borrowing protocol and amount I receive when I deposit, for example, my BTC, USDT. It really depends on demand of the this USDT. And it, it, it doesn't belong to political decisions or whatever yeah and great explanation great explanation we all uh, now we know what uh, freedom does uh, DeFi offers over the current banking system as we have said that if you all have the access on your assets does not be controlled by any other person and it does not include uh, politics great great to know what key advantages it has and the next question is to Arnav. So, what are the main challenges DeFi faces in terms of regularity compliances? We've been talking about DeFi for the past, I mean, when Ethereum came into the picture, right? When it became mainstream right now around 2017. Then in 2020, is gold run, everyone was again uh, talking about decentralization, DeFi, okay, it was again a big uh, thing that everybody was talking about. But in the upcoming bull run, I don't think we're going to be as decentralized as everyone thought we would be in the past six to seven years. Why? Well, the biggest news which came out two days ago, MasterCard introducing its crypto debit card. Why is that so? Right? It's only there to yes. monitor everyone. Right? You know, was facing a massive problem trying to understand how to regulate crypto, how to find crypto users, the keeping track of the transactions. And although... Um, using the MasterCard and integration of crypto with it makes everything convenient, but it comes at a cost. It comes at the cost and it stands against for what Web3 said it uh, came out to be for, which was anonymity and decentralization. The moment you start using our debit card, it will basically be sending all the information to the government, obviously, no matter what the company's name, how much crypto enters your account, how much is exiting it, who's, uh, where the money is going, to who, where the money is coming from. So moving forward, talking about compliances, I think up till now, governments know that, okay, it's very hard to defeat crypto. So what they're going to do, they're trying to lure everyone into some kind of, with some kind of benefits or some kind of convenience to make crypto accessible to everyone and somehow in and every person into a KYC system which automatically signs them up for um, some sort of post-compliance following, right? It's basically like the way when you sign up for your uh, Apple ID and you buy a subscription for an app. For example, my younger brother, he plays, he plays chess on my Apple account. I don't play chess at all, right? So he has an iPad in which I have connected my Apple account and I pay for the chess app like 350 rupees every month uh there were these two months where he did not play chess at all yet the amount was deducted from my uh account again and the thing is this is done this is done so discreetly that i did not receive an email which made a lot of noise or i did not receive a text which made a lot of noise yet my money was deducted from my account each and every month so you see how I was forced into a compliantry regulation where I have to pay a certain amount. I did not even know about it, yet I was a part of it and I was due. Who benefited from this? Apple. Is it hurting anyone? I mean, 350 rupees is not a lot of money. It's not hurting me. But over time, if you see, if you implement the same thing in crypto, if people are going to do more and more transactions, if people are going to adapt, uh, adapt crypto more and more, it's going to be a big issue because they're going to be adapting crypto the wrong way. 
we stood mm-hmm. for decentralization but now everything is being centralized so regarding compliances the governments know or have actually started to understand what crypto stands about which is anonymity they're going to force compliances in a way which no one can feel it's basically like uh, a slow killer you know i mean smoking a cigarette um, for a week or a month directly or smoking 10 cigarettes per day for a month won't kill you but over time for 50 years it will definitely one day it'll come knock my door you'll find yourself on a hospital bed and that's going to happen one day so i think i think i think that we can't we can't avoid these regulations these compliance because crypto smart folks we're going to escape out of the uh, we're going to escape out of this particular trap that the government is trying to force on us but rest of the 99% of the world so only 5% of the world owns bitcoin at the moment but i am assuming that when the rest of the 60 or 70% folks come to know about crypto once they understand the implications and the advantages of crypto they are going to onboard all to the ecosystem but the wrong way and obviously when the majority of people get onboarded onto crypto and they make wrong decisions we're going to suffer as well so great to know what the current situation is holding and what are the scenarios that are making this so complicated yeah yeah great great and the next question is for sergey how has the integration of smart contracts in defi reshaped this financial transactions and what further advancements do you expect in this area the the meaning of smart contract and their legal position in different countries on all over the world is differs from one hand on another hand as a software developer all of you guys know that code is a law on other side means that if someone published smart contract with some rules it's like a true and people who were a uh, white hat or black hat i mean hackers from time to time abused this smart contract it's really hard to speak about smart contracts means that in 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 i know that there are different types of smart contracts i mean that sometimes uh, that data is adjustable often and code or smart contract it's unchanged and can be changed but you know that in evm and cosmos on ton smart contracts became proxy like they became changeable and it's really massive and it, it it's still it, it's not under compliance and it's really hard topic to to speak but oh starting from 2020 when uh uniswap v2 appears v3 and so on we are living in the wild west condition means that we have different type of smart contract different type of vulnerabilities and uh we try to build this new era of web3 using this failures of the smart contract usage and now we see the really good and predictable solution i mean for me this uh, good solution is uniswap v2 or v3 versions means that it's quite predictable how to swap tokens at least without just knowing the prices of them just it's it's clear it's predictable usage but other smart contracts for example related uh oracles and use usage uh real real world events putting this real world event events result to smart contracts it's still challenging but i hope that in future we resolve it and we have like a golden standard across the whole countries and whole compliance but nowadays we have more more really uh, questions than um, results on, on using smart contract makes sense makes sense so so the next question for uh, arnav uh, how will the tokenization of real world assets transforming defi and what role do you think it will play in uh, bridging, uh, bridging the gap between traditional and decentralized application well this is actually a very nice question because one of the clients that we work with they're a climate tech company uh, wherein they're real world asset based right 
So basically, what this particular uh, climate com- climate tech company does is they have a very unique proposition, right? They're called EcoCred, and uh, what they basically are building right now is a dashboard for B two B and B two C both as well. So they help uh, uh, businesses and they help organizations to track, analyze, and reduce their carbon footprint. And uh, tracking, analyzing, and actually recording all of the things down to the dot in the climate tech space right now is very corrupted because there is no strict regulation outside of Europe right now at the moment. So a lot of countries and a lot of governments use these loose laws to participate in corruption and bribery, obviously, right? You might claim that I have reduced 500 tons of carbon that I've reduced throughout the year uh, when you wouldn't have even done anything. This is called greenwashing. When a company claims that they have done something towards the environment, but they have not, right? And this particular greenwashing uh, has been going on since the past 10 years now where governments and even companies, they claim to help the environment, but they don't. How do you solve this? You solve it through blockchain. So what Ecocreds yes. does is they basically have a proposition for the end consumer where in the trial set up the system, right? I'm giving you the idea. They basically uh, ask the people to basically take a picture whenever they're throwing out garbage, right? And the garbage truck which comes to collect is from a waste management organization that these guys are a part of. So, whenever a consumer basically clicks a photo while handing the trash back to the waste management organization's truck, dump truck, the picture is recorded on the blockchain. From then, when the truck collects all the dump from all its designated area, that information is again recorded on the blockchain. And I think a real-time weight is also measured as to how much weight did the entire truck collect. So that if the truck driver is trying to avoid some households on a particular day, one would get to know that, hey, maybe a 10 or maybe 15 or 20 households out of 500 houses did not give trash that day. But it's impossible to say that 100 people have not given their trash, right? So blockchain identifies that over there. Then the next point comes wherein the dump truck dumps the entire uh, uh, the trash in the waste management center and the trash is segregated into organic, uh, inorganic, recyclable and non-recyclable materials. Then again, there is uh, and there is an article which records the uh, the process being happening and registered on the blockchain. When the product is recycled or when the non-recyclable products are incinerated, <clears throat> even at that particular point of time, an article signals that hey, this particular product uh, that was recorded uh, at the collection of this particular period of time has now been incinerated. Then again, that information is basically collected. So you see how every step of the way when your waste was collected and deposited, recycled, not recycled, not incinerated, it was recorded on the blockchain through real world assets and uh, real world oracles. And now, since people have um, certain clarity over claiming how much trash they have disposed and recycled they get rewards in the end as well right they get rewards in tokens you can exchange your tokens for INR if you do P2P you can even buy Amazon tokens or whatever and uh, I think this is one of the best ways that blockchain and real world assets can help people because I mean just imagine the normal dump truck comes out outside of your house you really never know he takes your trash away and maybe he dumps it elsewhere what do you know? You really wouldn't know. But once everything yes. is recorded on the blockchain, everybody is go- uh, accountable for everything. And similar system have already can also be uh, set up for multiple multinational companies with high amounts of carbon footprint produced every year. And this is something that the project is working on. So I think accountability, transparency, and uh, sustainability is something that real world assets can help with, which was not possible earlier in the case. Great, great, great. So so now we know how it can be helped with the real world assets as you have given us with a great example of a garbage truck. How it gives us the tracking of everything and which is in our hands and we can also question them. 
where it is going and everything is working great great and next one to sake what are your thoughts on future of uh, stable coins particularly yield bearing stable coins in driving further defi adoption i think the stable coins have will have a bright future because it's quite predictable for everyone uh, that stable coins represent the real coins we just need to have a good authority who have who can mint it and this authority should provide proof of funds real proof of funds in uh, you know uh, for most crypto guys they know only usdt or at least usdc but i guess for every every uh, fiat currency for indian rupees for russian rubles for euros and also for euros binance listed just few years or few days ago a euro stable co- stable coin but i guess for each currency should be few uh few stable coins which are popular and and for me it's a really bright future for in in, in crypto and it's a fuel for defi protocols for lending borrowing protocols for exchanges and for protocols who can give you rewards that which can be easily used to exchange to fiat and buy something in real world that's why for me stable coins it's a part of rva and i i like all the rva topics and i, I like a uh, uh, previous answer by arnaf about garbage recycling with rva it's very re- it's a, a very good example i will reuse it in my speeches because for me rva uh, it, i have my own uh, understanding of rva and crypto wallets that represent a, a kind of inventory from rpg games and i, I hope that in few years our wallets will looks like not now we use only uh, stable coins like a in game currency to buy something in real world assets but in the future we will have these coins representing your garb how you recycle your garbage how you produce maybe oxygen if you grow if you grow vegetables for example All, and also it represent your right to take a electrical scooter for example rent something or even exchange your nfts on uh, to hotel room or a car in different countries and it will be your game like in game inventory i yeah great great i think arno has given a great idea for rasagi as he has given us an example about garbage truck kind of where we can use this kind of uh, technology thank you thank you and uh, the next question is for arno what are the implications of the growing adoption of uh, decentralized exchanges but traditional financial institutions i think in my opinion per se um dexes are gonna become irrelevant in the coming few years this is what i feel and it is only because uh centralization has solved one of the most strongest issues in uh, web3 that is ui ui my mom because yes. she yeah because my mom because she knows how to use uh, a normal swiggy app or a zomato app now so sir ki swiggy or zomato are like food delivery apps over here in india you know they resemble a lot in ui and uh, if she switches on to be it which is another food delivery or grocery delivery app the ui is similar if she switches on to maybe any other food delivery app or maybe uh, an online booking app she knows her way around everything because she's been trained over time to use these apps right and if tomorrow everyone to everyone were to invest in crypto who would they choose a very complex to understand and overly dependent uh, platform where i have to save my own private keys keep it hidden uh, identify their uh, ui as well they keep up with their marketing schemes because a lot of these texts they have their own interpersonal marketing right where you have to ke- take care of their aprs uh, maybe on some days there on some weeks there they have launched the marketing campaign where the aprs have increased they have collaborated with a new protocol so 
the combined asset chunks or an APR for that particular, uh, what do you call it? I, I forgot the term when, I forgot the term when both the assets, yeah, or maybe the DEX has collaborated with a new project and both of their combined liquidity increases in order to uh, provide more and more APR. You might want to invest one of the tokens more than you were investing before in order to get higher returns. It's just too complicated for anyone. I just yes. want a Christmas offer, right? What that two companies will do, they're like, hey, we've got Christmas over, you know, here's a Christmas offer, 25% off of this particular token or we'll buy one, uh, get one. these many tokens for airdrop or buy one, get one for sure. And this is something that my mom would love. This is something that mass adoption would love, right? Yes. There are very less people who understand the complications uh, that comes with Web3 and DEXs itself. You have to become a part of their uh, Discord and Telegram because if the site goes down, you're going to tag the founder, you're going to tag the team, you're going to ask them what's happening. There's no, there's no yes. call center over here. There's no, there's, 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 all you can do is like raise a ticket on Discord. My mom is not going to raise a ticket on Discord. She wants something, she, she wants someone she can call. Who's going to provide that? Web2 folks are going to provide that. So yes. I think that is that is what I feel about the entirety of thing. I think DEXs are going to become irrelevant after a while, and only the people who are uh, really who really want to keep their money hidden, maybe they're doing something shady or because of whatever reasons, they're going to operate through um, DEXs ultimately. Because you know what's going to happen? Your identity will never remain hidden because obviously through blockchain we can backtrack where the money came from, right? Through all the transactions. So let's say I, man, I don't want to name myself. Let's say my, uh, someone I know who wants to keep a very hidden identity. So five years down the line, when everybody accepts crypto and let's say Bitcoin will become a legal tender in India, this person only uh, pays through Bitcoin everywhere, right? He does not have a social identity. identity. Maybe he has a paid Twitter account so that he's connected to the world. Uh, he's not connected to Google or whatever, and he lives his life. He pays his, he pays his rent by paying through Bitcoin anonymous. But what's gonna happen when I pay someone who pays someone who pays someone who pays someone to fill my rent? My landlord will come to know where the transaction is coming from, and then it can be backtracked to where the transaction originally was released at. And from one person to other person to the previous person before that to the person before that, they can easily backtrack. So centralization is unavoidable. Decentralization will become irrelevant. I think only the people with a lot of money will know how to hide themselves properly. And I, I think that's that, that's uh, that's basically that's basically what I think. So do you have anything to add here? I want to add that in future we will see a mixture of CFI and DeFi maybe in one super app. Like Binance already done. We and Fintopia are doing the same. We're making a DeFi, CDFI wallet, which under the hood is a small Binance. We have a, 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 a most of C level in our company is X Binance. That's why we're building a Binance under the uh, interface of a wallet. And yeah, as enough already mentioned, we have a customer support service. We like. A, a common banking solution, centralized exchanges already have, but we have like a CFI, DeFi wallet with customer support. And for us and for me personally, it's it's the future of finance. It means the people can choose where they hold their crypto. Are they going to pay, for example, additional fees? For example, if you're using Tron blockchain, you have to pay TRXs. But if you're using centralized uh, solution to pay someone, it's totally free because it's on one, it's not tracking blockchain. But for people who want to be totally secure and not pri- to, to, to hide their, to, to make pri- real private transaction and all these things, I, I guess they are uh, scammers or real bad guys and of course they should avoid centralized exchanges but for uh, like a common people we have not nothing 
actually to hide. Of course, I, I, I like privacy anonymi- an- to, to act anonymously, but on most cases, I'm going to pay for my food, for my uh, house rent, for car, and so on. I did not scam anyone, and, and so on. And uh, I often can show the evidence, the, the source of funds, and so on. But for Web3, of course, I want to to to... To, to keep my privacy but anyway from time to time i put my money from centralized exchange to to my decentralized account of course if i do some crime and can be the transaction can be rolled back and i can they can find everything but it's only possible who who have authority to do it, not for every people, for, for, for scammers and hackers and so on. That's a great uh, continuation for the Arnav. And you have given us an, another example where we can roll back and track our uh, transactions. And that's a wrap, guys. Uh, that's uh, having a thanks for joining the DeFi conversation. And huge thanks uh, to you guys for joining this panel and uh, today's podcast. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Awesome. Thank you for having me again. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you, Sargi. Thank you, Charan. Bye-bye. Yeah.